me tonight and turn into Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, and we're going to read verses 13 through 15. And then if you will hold your place there and turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6 and verses 6 through 9. When you find your places, if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's Word. Amen. Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 15 says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Yeah. Then turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and verses 6 through 9, starting in verse 6, he says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Yeah. But they which that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction. And perdition. Yeah. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word, and Lord, we just pray that you'd help us tonight to glean the truth. Lord, that we might store them in the storehouse of our hearts. Lord, that we might hide your word in our hearts, that we might not sin against thee. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we just pray that you would just be with all those who aren't here tonight for sickness and health, for traveling. Lord, keep them safe and bring them back to us. Lord, that we might all work together for the furtherance of your gospel and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to preach uh, tonight about beware of covetousness. Yeah. Beware of covetousness. And we find here in Luke chapter 12 and verse 13, uh, one from the company that was following uh, Jesus and, and his disciples and apostles came and and spoke to him and said, Master, can you speak to my brother that he would divide the inheritance, our inheritance with me? You know, my brother's kind of being stingy and he's not giving me some of that inheritance. Can you talk to him and convince him that, you know, part of it's mine? And Jesus was like, come on, man. <laughs> he said, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Yeah. The point wasn't about the inheritance. It was where the man's heart was. Yes. His heart wasn't on the things that Jesus had been teaching and, and telling them. His heart the whole time had been on that inheritance. That's what he was consumed with. Because his heart was coveting those things worldly things. Yeah. The abundance of things that he wanted. And then, of course, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, it tells us we came into this world without anything and we're going to leave without anything. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> we brought nothing into this world. As it says. And we are going to take nothing out with us. He said in verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. And in verse 8 he tells us, And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. That is probably one of the most basic, I mean, truths and wisdom of God's Word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is the, the most simplest wisdom that anyone can understand. 
Because everyone understands that when we were born into this world, we were born into this world naked. Amen. None of us had anything when we first came into this world. All the things that we have had came from our mama and our daddy. You know, and our mama took care of us and our daddy provided a house for us to live in and all that. But you know what? As far as we are concerned, we had nothing. And in that same thought, we will leave the same way we came in. Mm -hmm. Naked and without anything. Yeah. Look at Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 and verse 21 it says. Well let's read verse 20. It says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked I... Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brother Clifford shared that song on Facebook not too long ago. Man, that's a powerful song yeah. because it comes from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I love songs that come straight from the Word of God because yeah. there's power there in the Word of God. But hey, it doesn't matter the things that happen in this life and the things that we obtain in this life. You know what? The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. It shows where our hearts and our minds should be, not on the things of this world, but on the Lord. Who gave them, amen? Yes. Who has the power to give them and has the power to take them away? Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. We need things in our life, guess what? We go to God who can give those things yeah. or who can sustain us and give us the things that we truly need, amen? Yeah. Our hearts and minds shouldn't be on the things that we obtain, but on the, on the Lord God who has blessed us with those things. Yeah. Whether we have them or we don't have them, God is blessed. Amen? The Lord is blessed. He is good and righteous. Yeah. Look at Psalm chapter 49. <clears throat> That song, the Lord giveth and taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. I served Him before, I'll serve Him today, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what it's about right there. Psalms 49 and verses 16 and 17, He says, Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. <laughs> Amen. You know what? We got all these people who are rich and famous, and you know, everybody builds them up and, and looks at them as, as being great, you know, and, and they want to read about them in the magazines and they want to know everything there is to know about them, and they spend their lives wanting to be like them and dress like them and act like them. And you know what? When they die, they're going to die the same way we're going to die. Right. The rich man is going to die just like the poor man. And that's with nothing. Right. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. You're not going to take anything away with you when you die. Right. You know what? A sad thing, and I know some of this is just for the, the, the uh, family to be able to mourn the loss of a loved one and stuff like that, but it's still silly to me. I was the only Catholic funeral I ever went to, and I felt I felt wrong. My spirit was wrong during the whole thing because everything that happened was wrong. But you know, the family was coming up there, and they were putting her pack of cigarettes in there in the casket with her, and her favorite biter, and they were putting all these different things, some Oreos. And they were just packing her, you know, funeral thing with the things that she liked. 
And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. I know these people need to mourn. Don't get me wrong, okay? I know that there's a process in mourning for lost loved ones. But she ain't taking none of that with her. You know what? People need to understand that the things of this world don't matter when it comes to life and death. It's the Lord that matters. It's Jesus Christ and His Word that matters. And once we leave this world, it's too late to make changes. You can't go back and do things differently once you've left this world. And we can't go back and change the past anyway. You know what? We can change today. Because today we have right now. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 15 it says, As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. And again, we find the same thing. You can't take anything with you. And I don't know if I've told this here at the, at the church before. I'm sure I have. But uh, a man who had, had passed away, he had wrote, wrote in his will that he wanted to be buried in his 60, you know, I think it was his 1962 uh, Lincoln Continental. He wanted to be buried in that thing. And so they, they honored his wish. He was rich in life, and so they had the money to honor his wish. And so they put him in his best uh, suit and all that, and they had him in sitting in the front seat with his hands on the wheel, you know, and they had his favorite uh, hat on and glasses on. And, and that, you know, all his friends were there, and they had dug the grave out where that they could put that Lincoln Continental in the ground and, and bury him in it. And as they were pushing the car into the grave, his two friends over to the side, one looked at the other and said, man, how that's living. (laughs) But I mean, that's how people think, right? People think that, you know, it's the things that we accumulate that make us who we are. And it's not. It's who we are in Christ that makes us who we are. As I preached this morning, it's Christ living in us that makes the difference. Because without God, we can do nothing. But with God, all things are possible. And it is for sure that we cannot take anything with us when we die. This is what we need to understand. And you say, well, we understand this, but it's something that we need to be reminded of from day to day. Amen. Because even we as Christians who have been saved for many years and have known the Bible and have served God in His house and, and, and have served, uh, you know, out in the streets preaching, sometimes even we get to the point where we get our eyes focused on the material things of this world and we forget that God is the one that's in control. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then he says... Having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. You know, God is going to give us the things that we need. Amen? We might not have all the things that, you know, our neighbors have. We might not have all the things that these superstars have or, or, you know, these rich financial bankers have. But when we serve the Lord and we have Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're going to have everything that we need. God is going to provide for us. And with what God provides for us, we need to be content with that. Amen? We need to be content having food and raiment. If that's all we have is food and clothing, then we need to be content if that's all we have. But you know what? We've been blessed way more than that. Amen. You know, we've been blessed with so many things. You know, in, in America today, we uh, park our cars out in the driveway and, and our garages are full of junk, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, 
We have so much stuff. We've been blessed way more than what we deserve. But you know what? With all that stuff, sometimes can come the burden of worrying about stuff. Amen. That's true. God doesn't want us to worry about that stuff. He wants to be us to be content with if we have clothing and food, then we need to be content. Yeah. Because God is going to take care of our needs. Look at Psalm chapter 37 and verse 16. Psalm 37 and verse 16 it says, A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Yeah. Just a little. That's all it takes to be happy. Amen? It doesn't take a whole lot of things to make a person happy. Or it shouldn't. Yeah. If you are content in the Lord, then the little things are going to be the things that you treasure the most. Yeah. Just a little bit that a righteous man hath is far better than all the riches of the wicked. For as I preached in, on Wednesday night last week, you know what? Because those who are the wicked of this world, they are cursed. Amen. Their houses are cursed. Their, their riches are cursed. All they have is cursed because they are against God and His Word. Amen. You take a man who's living by faith, and just the little things make him excited. Amen? Yeah. Just the little things you see God do in your life. Man, that is awesome. Yeah. To see God do those things in your life. And so that brings a peace in your heart and a joy that passeth all understanding. Amen? Because you know that God is truly taking care of your needs. Yeah. That's worth more than anything that this world can afford. Just as the song, I'd rather have Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather have uh, Jesus than, than riches of this world. Because that is true happiness and fulfillment. Amen. Proverbs chapter 15, and verses 15 through 17. says, All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Yeah. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Yeah. I love that. Amen. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Isn't that what it's about? Yeah. Having a merry heart. Man, when you know that God's taking care of you, you feel love, right? Yeah. You know what it is to feel the love of Christ in your heart and in your life. You have something to sing about. Amen? Not only that, you know if you die, you've got a home in heaven. Amen. Where you'll never have to worry about another thing ever again. Where God is going to wipe away all our tears. Amen. And we won't have sickness and pain anymore. Hey, we have something to be joyous about and be excited about. Amen. The things of this world can't compare to what God has for those who love Him. Yeah. And what He has prepared for them in that life to come. So don't get your hearts fixed on the stuff of this world and don't let the things that of this world get you down. Amen? Don't start worrying about all the things you don't have. But be thankful for the things that you do have. Yeah. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is. Amen? better just to have a salad when you have love in your heart and in your house because of Jesus than to have a stalled ox with a steak and the ribs and all that stuff and have trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the reason is, is he 
he goes on to tell us, because they that be rich fall into a sin. Those that that's their heart's desire are the material things, money. Those people who want riches, and you can get mad at me if you want to, but those people who spend their money buying uh, lottery tickets because they want to get it rich, they're falling into a snare. Yeah. And it's the snare of the devil. And they don't even know. Yeah. And they lose their happiness real quick mm -hmm. when things don't go the way they plan. <clears throat> because their hearts are set on all the wrong things. It's not even a question if buying the ticket is wrong or right. It's a matter of where your heart is to want to buy a ticket. Yeah. Because your heart is wanting riches and money thinking that that will solve all your problems when nothing will solve your problems except humbling yourself and giving your life to Christ. Yeah. And serving Him with all your heart. That's where true happiness is. And that's where gladness comes from. Yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10 tells us, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. People go chasing after their dreams of money and wealth. And their dreams of money and wealth take them far from the faith that is of, of God's Word. They have erred from the faith. Yeah. They have put doubt in their own minds of how God can take care of those who follow Him. Yeah. And in doing so, have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You know, life is so much more simple when you just trust God. Amen. Isn't it? Yeah. Life is so much more easy and simple when you just believe God's Word and trust Him that He is going to do what He said He would do. Yeah. Because then you don't have to worry about things. Amen? You don't have to worry about the material things of this world because you know God has your best interest at heart. Yeah. Now look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 22 it says, he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Here it tells us why they depart from the faith. Because of the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, they choke the word. <laughs> They choke out the Word in our lives. What, you know, when we get to start, you know, caring about the things of this world, and we allow the deceitfulness of riches, which the deceitfulness of riches is, is that if we had money, then we wouldn't have problems. That's what people think. Well, if I just had enough money to, to do what I want to do, then I wouldn't have any cares of this world. Well, that's a lie. Man, it seems like the rich people are the ones with the most problems. Amen? Just turn on the TV. Just look at the tabloids when you're standing there. <laughs> no, don't look at the tabloids. Some of them are just outlandish. But you know what? I mean, it doesn't take us a rocket scientist to figure out people who are rich have just as much problem, if not more, than the rest of us do. But you know what? If we allow those things to overtake us, then they are going to choke out the Word of God in our lives. Yeah. And that's why we need to put those things away from us and allow the Word of God to dwell in us richly yeah. in all wisdom. Amen? Sanctifying the Lord God in our hearts. And 
being ready to give an answer to every man of the hope that lies within us. Yeah. And they have to see that hope, amen? And that hope comes from trusting in God amen. and knowing that God is going to take care of our needs. And then Matthew chapter 6, and we'll be through. And every one of us has heard these, this message before. It's not new. But you know what? We have to be reminded. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have to be reminded. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Amen. Here a little. There a little. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31 it says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil there are. Yeah. You know what? Over in 1 Timothy chapter 6, he says, Having food and raiment, let us be content. You know what? We shouldn't even worry about that. Yeah. We shouldn't even worry about what we're going to eat and what we're going to drink and what we're going to wear. Because if we do what God has called us to do, and that is to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, then we know that God's going to take care of those things too. Yeah. We won't have to want for those things. God will take care of us. But our hearts and our minds need to be on Him. Yeah. Amen? Our affections need to be on those heavenly things where Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father where the angels stand around the throne of God singing holy, holy, holy. Amen? Yeah. Holy is the Lamb. Yeah. That's where our hearts should be. Is on blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. yeah, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's stand. Lord, we thank you tonight for your message. We just pray that you work in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, help us to keep our hearts and minds focused. That you are our creator. That you are our God, our Lord and Savior. And that you have provided all things for us. If we will just follow after you. Lord, we thank you for loving us and giving your Son to die for our sins. Lord, help us to be living sacrifices unto you, Lord. Holy and acceptable in your sight, which is our reasonable service. Lord, forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.